Okay, uh, so let's uh, go back and look at all this a little bit differently now. Um, since we found out that kind of what happens is that uh, it's a sort of local interaction with the distribution function uh, that's involved in Landau damping, um, let's talk about some, uh, let's call it further examples. And here I won't go through too much of the math, much of the mathematics. Um, the first one I want to talk about uh, is the so-called bump on tail instability, uh, sometimes called a beam plasma inst instability. Um, and the idea is that for this, um, you imagine that I have a distribution function uh, with usual sort of Maxwellian background distribution. That's fine. But then way out here on the tail, what you imagine is that you introduce a little bump, you know, a beam or something like that, and that it has some finite thermal spread. If I then so this was really, um, this was f of u, the distribution function is a function of u. If I now plot df du, um, what you find is that if I bring this point down here, and we'll call that point the beam velocity point, um, what you'll find is that the distribution function in this region has a negative derivative. However, in some little region just before I hit that, it has a positive derivative and then goes back to negative. Okay? So what you end up with is a region of velocity space, actually, for which if I was able to introduce a wave, that's a spurious thing, if I was introdu able to introduce a wave into this region here, then that wave, okay, if it interacted with a group of particles, could effectively take some particles at higher energy and move them over to lower energy if it resonantly interacted with those waves and flattened the distribution function in that region by making them all go at roughly the same phase velocity. So, indeed, this shows up as a positive DFDU if you go back to our W, uh, imaginary part of the frequency, that would be a positive imaginary part, hence a growth rate. So indeed, um, this flattening um, of the local distribution function would now give uh, gives energy to the wave, not takes it away as in usual Landau damping. However, for only for phase velocities a little bit less than the beam velocity, and this leads to df du greater than zero, and uh, it leads to, you know, imaginary omega greater than zero. Uh, some people might call this Landau growth instead of Landau damping because I've interacted the wave with some particular particles and gotten a growing wave out of it. So indeed you can have um, a bump on tail instability if you work, work out all this stuff. Another example is that we could imagine ion Landau damping. And we'll sort of come back to this in a moment. But uh, let's look at the distributions. Suppose we get the same distribution, which we effectively do, uh, from the ions as from the electrons. Well, first we perhaps ought to recall that our F was equal to 1 over root pi V thermal e to the minus U squared over V thermal squared. <coughs> 
But remember that the electron thermal velocity is the square root of the mass ratio larger than the ion thermal velocity if, you know, they're the same, roughly the same temperature. So what that means is first that the electron distribution function is much smaller but extends over much larger velocities. So the electron thermal velocity distribution looks something like this. Okay, so this is electrons. And what does the ion distribution function look like on the same scale? Well, it's 40 times bigger, okay, 40 times bigger, and 40 times narrower, or 42.85 times. But, you know, that's a little hard to draw, so we'll just kind of do it like this. So this is ions. And now you can imagine um, that if I came into a region here, that I would have some, res uh, that is to say, I imagined that I had a wave with a phase velocity of omega over k right there. If I could have such a wave, then it would interact resonantly and get some significant ion Landau damping. And it also get a little bit of electron Landau damping, but maybe, you know, the distribution function of the electrons is sufficiently flat that maybe their gradient isn't so big and maybe we don't get too much of an effect. Um, so uh, this is uh, wave-particle interaction. on the tail of the ion distribution. That is to say, omega over k is somewhat greater than the ion thermal speed, but it will be much smaller than the electron thermal speed. Okay. Now, um, um, the mathematics of this, well, so you can go through various examples, but what you really end up wanting to go into is to have more or less of a, a common, let me put it this way, mathematics that you can treat both the electrons and ions when the phase velocity of the electrons and ions is at some arbitrary value through here. You don't like to have to make these expansions for small or large or, you know, something like that. But you'd really like to be able to do it for any arbitrary phase velocity compared to the thermal speed. And the way you do that is by using something which is called the plasma dispersion function. So we need to kind of talk about that in just a moment. Uh, plasma dispersion function uh, is a particular integral that comes up, uh, and it's, um, well, uh, sometimes also it's called the Fried Conti function after Fried and Conti, who wrote a book uh, with his, which is mostly just a table of this function. Uh, and Fried Conti, uh, academic press, the book is by the same name, academic press, uh, New York, 1961. And what they end up um, defining, well, first let me, well, I'll just define it and then we'll come back, is they define a function z of zeta, which is 1 over root pi integral minus infinity to infinity uh, dt e to the minus t squared divided by t minus zeta, where the imaginary part of zeta is greater than 0. Again, uh, it has all the analytic continuation properties that we had before. Now, um, let me also write down uh, that this zeta is going to turn out to be omega over kV thermal. And so what I want to write down are some limiting cases of this. And the first one I want to write down is the adiabatic limit. And that means adiabatic means that particles are moving fast compared to the wave. 
the waves kind of slow and the particles are very fast. So that will mean the small argument limit, namely zeta much less than 1. And for that, the z of zeta becomes approximately i root pi uh, e to the minus zeta squared times minus 2 zeta times 1 minus 2 zeta squared over 3 plus 4 zeta to the fourth over 15 minus and so forth. How do I obtain those, by the way? Well, for small zeta, okay, you just uh, make a basically a power series type expansion, but anyway, yeah, power series and small zeta, uh, and then calculate away, but you do have to keep track of the uh, residue term. On the other hand, the other limit is the fluid limit, zeta much greater than 1, and that leads to z of zeta is approximately equal to i root pi, and I'll put in a sigma, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment, e to the minus zeta squared, and then minus 1 over zeta, times 1 over 1, 1 over 2 zeta squared, plus 3 over 4 zeta to the fourth, plus and so forth. And this is equivalent to the type of expansion we did before. Um, well, anyway, and this quantity sigma, okay, is defined as zero for imaginary zeta greater than zero, one for imaginary zeta equals zero, and two for imaginary zeta less than zero, and that's so as to keep this function properly analytically continued from zeta being in the upper half plane through the singularity on the real axis and into the lower half plane. The other thing which is kind of nice to know is that z prime of zeta, which is defined as dz d zeta, the derivative of the plasma dispersion function with respect to its argument, is just minus 2 times 1 plus zeta z of zeta. Now, one other little feature, let me put it that way, is that if you look in the Russian literature, um, they sometimes define this um, a little bit differently. So I'll just give you a hint, so to speak. They found have a function capital W of zeta, which is 1 over i root pi times this plasma dispersion function, z of zeta. Um, so, if you, you know. Now, this wasn't quite the function that we had in our particular calculations. If you look back, it's close, but it's not quite. And so, what we'll want to do is now go back and look at our plasma dispersion, um, plasma dispersion relation and write it in particular in terms of this plasma dispersion function. So let's um, look back at our plasma dispersion relation for a kinetic plasma. What we had was that the dielectric constant epsilon of k and omega over epsilon naught was equal to 1 minus omega p e squared over k squared and the integral minus infinity to infinity du df du divided by u minus omega over k. Now, a couple of things. The first thing is that this, this was for electrons, and you can sort of imagine it'd be quite easy to just add something for ions because I didn't really make any approximations. I just didn't treat the ions kinetically. Uh, and the second thing is, and so, you know, I could add the same thing minus same for E goes to I. Then, the second thing is, what's the dimensionality of this integral? Well, if you look at it, du 
and an F go together because the integral over all velocity space, which would be du in this case, it's a one-dimensional distribution of F will give me unity. But there's a one over velocity coming from u and a one over velocity coming from the singular denominator. So it's convenient to just write an, an arbitrary V thermal squared there and put in a V thermal squared there. You do that and then you sum over species and then this just becomes 1 over omega p j squared divided by k squared V thermal j squared. And then we have some integral here which I'll write as V thermal squared the integral minus infinity to infinity du um, df du df j du I should say u minus omega over k. And that's a V thermal j squared. So this then, the j is, is equal to electrons and ions. You know, you just sum over the two species. Now, how do we handle that particular function? Well, um, I guess we just have to go through a few things here. Uh, let's look at this integral, which is V thermal j squared, the integral minus infinity to infinity of uh, du uh, d df j by du divided by u minus omega over k. Now, clearly what we'd like to do is de-dimensionalize all the velocities in here. Okay, So if we do that, let's define as was true in the, as the variable of the plasma dispersion function, T is equal to U over V thermal J. If we do that, then first this is minus infinity to infinity DT, and then this becomes D by DT, and then this becomes FJ of T, and it turns out we still have one V thermal J left over, and this becomes T minus omega over K V thermal J. Now the FJ was equal to 1 over root pi and the V thermal and stuff like that. So it turns out it's 1 over root pi V thermal J times V thermal J. This one from here and this one from the F minus infinity to infinity DT D by DT of E to the minus T squared divided by T minus omega over K V thermal J. Now, um, you can now integrate this by parts, okay? So, so this becomes 1 over root pi. Uh, well, let's, so let's do it on the following line here. So it's 1 over root pi. If I integrate by parts, I then get e to the minus t squared divided by t minus um, omega over k v j v thermal j from minus infinity to infinity, but that actually vanishes. And then you get minus the integral from minus infinity to infinity dt e to the minus t squared divided by t minus omega, let's make it zeta now. Well. I guess I got to leave it here. Omega over KV thermal J quantities squared. Uh, actually, it becomes plus because it's well, anyway, because there's a minus sign down below. Um, now that's sort of not so obvious, but it turns out that this all is then one over root pi, and then this can be written as the derivative with respect to zeta where zeta is going to be obviously that second argument of minus infinity to infinity dt e to the minus t squared divided by t minus zeta, where zeta is defined equal to omega over k v thermal j. And so this just becomes z prime of omega over k v thermal j. So using this result for this whole integral back here in the dispersion relation, 
what we then find is that our dispersion relation becomes epsilon of k and omega over epsilon naught is equal to 1 minus the sum over species omega pj squared k squared v thermal j squared and then z prime of omega over k v thermal j. So it turns out that it's not the plasma dispersion function itself which comes in, but rather its derivative. Uh, but that's um, sort of no big deal. Um, now, this factor, omega squared over k squared v thermal squared j squared, we can also write as 1 over, you remember, 2 k squared lambda to by j squared. Okay, so the idea then uh, is that this is our general dispersion relation. What I, I next want to, I guess, kind of briefly go through is various limits. Um, and I, I guess I will not write them out in tremendous detail, but uh, let's call them limits. The first one is the one which we did, which is, let's say, cold plasma. And by that, what we mean is that the phase velocity, omega over k, is greater than both the electron thermal speed and the ion thermal speed. Um, if you plot your distribution function, um, again, the electron one is sort of like this. The ion one is incredibly peaked and, you know, localized. And what I'm in, then interested in are waves way out here on the tail of the distribution function, right? So this is U and these are Fs. Now, for this case, since the phase velocities of the electrons and ions are both large, in terms of this dispersion relation, it means that this Z function gets approximated and its derivative in the large argument limit, okay? because you remember that zeta e was equal to omega over k v thermal e. That's much greater than 1. And zeta i equals omega over k v thermal i. And that's much greater than 1. So putting those two together um, and, and approximating the z functions, what you find is that epsilon hat over epsilon naught is approximately 1 minus, and then it's I'll just put the lowest order forms, omega PE squared over omega squared. And you get from the ions omega PI squared over omega, I, omega squared. And then 2I root pi sigma omega PE squared over K squared V thermal E squared. Um, and omega over K V thermal E. And then E to the minus omega over K V thermal E. E quantity squared. So this is our, just what we did, our electron plasma oscillation. The next one I want to do, so that has a cold plasma, both electrons and ions, um, and both of them are in the uh, asymptotic, I'm sorry, in the fluid or asymptotic regime. Uh, the next case you can treat is adiabatic uh, electrons and cold ions. And for that, what you'll have is that the phase velocity is intermediate between the ion thermal velocity, so the ions are fluid-like, but much less than the electron thermal velocity, so the electrons are adiabatic. Uh, so this means that zeta i is much less than 1, but zeta, I'm sorry, zeta i is much greater than 1, but zeta e is much less than 1. And again, if I make a, a plot of this, uh, you end up with the ion distribution function being very localized, 
the electron being very broad, and the particular waves you're interested in are about here. And this gives you um, epsilon hat over epsilon naught is equal to 1 plus 1 over, work it all out, k squared lambda to by electron squared, 1 plus i root pi omega over k v thermal electron, and then minus omega pi squared over omega squared plus ion Landau damping. And this part gives you ion plasma oscillations, obviously, with the electron Debye shielding. So actually, and you get some electron Landau damping and some ion Landau damping. What happens if I go to the final limit of both adiabatic electrons and adiabatic ions? I'm down here. Well, I get Debye shielding of both electrons and ions. And so that's the, the lowest order. Both adiabatic will just give me uh, damping, Landau damping, uh, very strong Landau damping and Debye shielding of both electrons and ions. Okay, we'll quit there, and next time we'll be interested in putting in magnetic field effects, which become a little more complicated by adding a dimensionality to the problem.